let's join the tournament. It's late joining, a almost two hour long tournament. Probably get in maybe a couple games here. Oh, am I going to play Mr. Kushaj, who also joined? It's possible. <laughs> I think we're both waiting for a game. May the fourth oh. month be with you. I've lost three times to Mr. Kushaj, who's also a streamer, who resubbed yesterday. Um, have I been black every single game? I'm trying to remember what openings we we've played before, but now I forget. Oh, Carol Khan. Oh, this is good prep for uh, tomorrow because Levy plays Carol Khan. I don't know yet what I'm going to play against Levy. What do I play against Carol Khan? I'll play. So my last match against Levy, I played this exchange variation. Loving all the YouTube content recently. Where Queen C7, Knight A3. And we, we went very deep into theory. I wonder how well Mr. Kushaj is prepared. I think H3 is the move here. I should review this. Um, Because otherwise, if I develop the knight, there's bishop G4. So H3 is like a small nuance. And black either has to do this or this. Uh, appreciate people using their prime subs. Thank you, Riddler. Yeah, so it's kind of a weird development setup, like knights on e2 and c2. Uh, now I'll play bishop f4, hitting the queen. Uh, very possible we'll end up trading the, the bishops. I don't have too much specific like memory of preparation from this this position, but I know it gets very strategic. Uh, usually the knight can come here. I'm not entirely sure if I want to trade off. B4 is a, a typical move. Two months with many more to come. I could also I could start by taking, but. In some way, that actually Have strengthens black structure. C4 versus Caro Can. Yes. Yeah, actually, C4 on move two has been one You're of my main the best weapons. Chess streamer ever, and ever Eric Pog. Oh, thanks for that, Pog. Yeah, I used to play like Panel Bafinik and Thank different you move for orders. All the content, Eric. Okay, so we're completing development. Thank you for the bits, Vegas Subi. There's a similar idea um, in the Queen's Gambit declined exchange variation. So it'd be reversed, but when you Thank push the pawns against the Queen the here. Two months watching your stream now. Ooh. Happy two months, Louise Prianti. And so many people cheering and subbing. Really appreciate it. Shanghai Czech asking if I'll be going to national or US opens. Okay, I think A5 is a move to play. Still in my comfort zone. Um, yeah, because the queen has to go all the way back, and now I feel like I had a very similar position against Levy, uh, where it becomes very positional. Knights want to be here and here, eventually on d3. I might start with knight c1. Rook e1 also flexible. Uh, Black has the idea of maneuvering the knight here. Also an idea of Black eventually playing e5. So I'll, I'll address comments and questions no one loves you maybe like a I bit do. later. I love you too, whoever you are. Uh, knight c1, knight e4, knight b3. Evening, Eric. e5. There's also knight c1, knight e4, f3, knight d6, knight b3. Huh. There's also just rook e1. I'll start we with Rookie 1. Have to address this. Okay, I'm not addressing it. Even though when I say that, I'm kind of addressing it. Ah, fell into the trap of addressing it. What is E6? 
E6 is very solid. Um, oh, there's another weird idea, which I might do. I might put the rook on C1. I shouldn't be taking time. Like, these moves are very low-risk moves. I should have played much, much quicker. Um, the idea with rook C1 is to free the A1 square for the knight. It's not about where the knight is. It's about where the knight is going. Very soon it will be uh, going to the promised land on C5. C5, it's kind of like an artificial outpost. Because even though there's a pawn on, on B7... Whenever the pawn moves up, I take it. So that's a very nice square for the knight. It's common, like in more closed positions, you you want to sometimes be creative with the knight maneuvers, identify the key squares they want to get to, and then find the the paths. Sometimes it's uh takes a little bit of creativity. Oh, I love you too, Icelandic chess noob. I love your country too, even though I haven't been there in a while. Okay, somehow I'm up on time, despite being distracted a uh, little bit in the opening. But I'm managing. I like these positions. Thoroughly enjoy your content. Oh, I thoroughly enjoy saying your name. Ropa dope. Ropa dope. Um, yeah, like usually my style, especially when streaming these days, is like gambits and aggressive play, but. Um, this game kind of, it embodies my over-the-board style, like solid positional play, um, more kind of closed maneuvering game. So now I'm threatening to take and take. Uh, rook b8 would walk into a pin. Rook a7 looks sad. So now maybe queen g, queen g3 runs into knight h5. There's a funny line here, here, oh no, my queen. Probably not worth it. So this knight wants to be here. Or here. Considering f3 just restricting knight e4, but probably not necessary. More bits for the badge and reminder. Mm. Who do you think was the most creative player? Love you, Eric. Uh, Maybe Dubov or Morphe? I don't know. Um, I gotta focus. After this game, I'll take some time. Address the questions. There's another moment I should not be taking too much time. Maybe Rook C2. I think Rook C2 opens up possibilities. I was thinking King H1, Knight G1, but it would lead up F2 undefended. So, Rook on C2 potentially defends F2. Prepares some maybe eventual double up. It also opens a c1 square for this knight. I probably want to come to d3. Um, not sure if I want to trade bishops. I play queen f3 first. But yeah, I'm going for kind of the squeeze. I'm trying to find my optimal setup, which is probably rookie two. Knight d3, knight e5, etc. Actually, my, maybe my queen should be on e3 to enable f3. This is a one piece that's kind of annoying in black's position. Actually, queen here, knight c1, queen c, or knight c4, queen c1. What does Eric have a ba in? That should be on my wiki, my Wikipedia page, if that still exists. Not sure, though. But I, I know what I have a BA in, but I'll, I'll discuss later. <laughs> so now if I take, I win a pawn, but then I lose a pawn. That's probably a, not a good trade for me. Um, yeah, knight b5 is, is very reasonable. Uh, if I play knight... E5? Knight E5, things get weird. Because F6. Uh, 
Actually, not sure. I could play rook c1. Just solid move. Yeah, it's um the knights are tangoing. And black actually found some nice squares for the knights. You should keep in mind there's no increment in this game, so this could come down to some kind of time scramble. Okay, so this simplifies a little bit. Ah, uh, so the Black Knight's finding its way to c4. Not too harmful. Put the rook back on. E-file. So I'm doubled up on the only half-woven file. Um, right now, I mean, e6 is very well supported, but there's a benefit of Black never being able to play f6, at least in the near future. So I'm, I'm basically threatening bishop... Yeah, I'm threatening bishop g5, because here, here, there's some pin. Rook's tied down to the pawn, so there's no rook e8. And I'm actually, I'm controlling a lot of squares in black's territory, so the pieces don't really have so much room to maneuver. Yeah, b6, I'd probably just take it. I might actually win the... Oh, never mind. Now, if I play this move... The rook swings over. I might actually... I want to swing over to the A file because there's a target. It's the best way to do this. Bishop g5. Oh, there's a funny line. Enjoying your chill chess content. Oh, I enjoy your words. Okay, I'm going to play bishop g5 because... I feel like it, it will make black think like where to move the rook. Yeah, the funny line is after rookie eight, I play knight d7, um, followed by knight f6. And basically, what's I think what's going to happen is I get knight f6, I either win the exchange or I get a monster bishop and then create some mating ideas. The queen's a bit out of play. I mean, maybe we'll see queen d6 here. We trade queen f8. But then I I can kind of milk both sides of the board. I feel like a farmer. Yeah, so this is kind of... Um, it's a nice example of the principle of two weaknesses. Where there's weaknesses on the king side, but there's also this weakness on the queen side. Um, so I'm going to try and spread black thin like butter. Turn the milk into butter. Not sure if this metaphor makes any sense. So if rook a8, I have b5. Rook c8, I take it. Ah, there's ninety seven. This move. It gets weird. Almost as weird as my metaphors. Let's take it. So ninety seven. Knight's coming to e four. I did win a pawn. I have a pass pawn. Just have to watch time. Frozen. No, you're not. Uh, queen e three or queen d three. Probably doesn't matter too much. Kind of like queen d3. Because when I have the dark square bishop, I want my queen controlling light squares. Oh, that's a fork. Oh, no. Ah, my position. Okay, I have to play bishop e5. That's a fork. Uh, let's play this move. I'm still alive, but I, I forgot C3 was hanging. I like the biggest weakness in the position, too. And my time... And I'm threatening a sneaky move, Queen A1, hitting the Rook, which is defended, but I'm also having eventual ideas of back-ranking Black. Back-ranking Black. But Black might back-rank me, too, but... Like, Queen C8 is actually... Oh, there's a funny line. Or is there? Never mind. 
So now e6 is undefended. Okay, probably, bishop's probably coming here. Oh, the bishop defends c1. I don't know if I would have like considered bishop f4 against queen c8. Oh, queen c8 hits a rook. So I guess queen c8, I would have had to play rook a1. But now with queen c8, I play queen a1. Okay, position's getting weird. I'm attacking the pawn, which is still undefended. I've, I think I've, I went wrong, like blundering the pawn earlier, but now like, it's still, it's still looking nice. Um, queen h5. I mean, maybe I just push the b pawn. Pass pawns must be pushed. Okay, so we're we're getting into some time scramble. Rook a8, king g7. Like I wasn't sure whether to include rook a8, but I like the rook uh, focused on the pawn because queen h5 I can then take. Okay, that's a move. That's a reasonable move. Rook a8, king g7. F3 almost traps a knight. But doesn't quite. But maybe I play F3 anyway. Oh, there's knight G3. Oh, what is this position? We tr Wait, let's start with start with this. To watch out for knight E2. Okay, I'm going to put the bishop on a solid square. Have this diagonal. Queen a2. Maybe queen c7, or queen c2. Restricting the knight, threatening this now. Okay, now I'm threatening this and etc. Mainly etc. Wow. King h2. Always good to have the king diagonal one square from the knight, or two squares from the knight. Oh, tickle the knight. Queen h8 is actually consideration soon, followed by this and this. Oh, let's trade. Let's trade. Okay, so it's still pressuring the rook. And it's a weird position because I'm not sure how to make progress. I might move here and then here. Oh, it might be a draw too, but hopefully not. Yeah, so there's perpetual threat. So I'm controlling e1, very important. So queen g3 here, there's no queen e1. And now I put the rook behind the pawn. And now let's um, let's put the king... Wait, this is it's not quite mate. Oh, that was a blunder by me. Ah, I lost my baby pawn. No! Ah, all my pieces! Ah, if if the king took the pawn, it would have been stalemate. Oh, that's such a fun game too. It came down to time. Good game, Mr. Kushaj. Also, shout out, uh, fellow streamer. I don't think he was streaming though. Um, if we analyze, 
Ah, it was such a nice game. But I didn't quite turn the, the milk into butter. Look at this graph, too. I was flying high. But not high enough. Man, what did I miss? Easy win? Okay, so h4. Ah, uh, there's this plan. Queen a8, rook a7. Yeah, I guess I should have been aware of, like, black. It's hard to make progress on the king's side. There's no reason to take. Um, I'm sure I've, there are a lot of opportunities here. And then, yeah, even here, well, around here, this is time scrambling. Okay, that was a fun game. I'll put that on YouTube. I'll leave a, a link to my uh, opponent's Twitch channel. And if he has a YouTube channel, uh, check out the video description on YouTube. And thanks for watching. And follow on Twitch.